Good afternoon. Happy Vlogmas Day 5. So, happy December 5th. So, we are going to go straight to it. Let's check our advent calendars for the fur babies first. They are outside. Let's see. We're looking for five. Day five. Where is day five? Oh, right here. It's another biscuit. It's only one. So I'm just going to break it in half. To the fur babies. Looks like it's grilled. It still smells weird. Alright. We'll put this down and then check out the book we have for me to read. So number five is right here for our Disney advent calendar. Let's see what the lucky book is today. Ooh. It's Disney Princess, a Christmas gift for Chip. Now this should be a good one. That's what we're reading later on today. Story time with Ansel. Let's check our Pokemon one. Alright, number five, number five. There's number five. Oh, this one's a little bit easier. Who it is? Oh, look at this one. They get harder every time when they come out of this thingy. Bear Pokemon. Teddy Teddyrissa? I think that's what he said. I think so. Alright, well let's put him or her by the tree. So it's getting a little bit fuller now. We have four Pokemon on display. From our Pokemon Abbey calendar. So we're going to head out, see what we get into today. It is Sunday. Not much happens besides laundry day and then getting ready for the week of hard working work. So yeah, so not much today, but still vlogging with y'all. Hey everyone, welcome back. Now we're gonna do our little segment, story time with Atso. And the story that we are reading today is A Christmas Gift for Chip. It was Christmas Eve at the castle. The enchanted objects didn't usually exchange presents, but they loved to decorate the library and trim the tree. Belle was eager to help and place a pair of her shoes by the fireplace. What are you doing, Belle? Chip asked. When I was a little girl, my father and I would leave out our shoes on Christmas. E for Papa. Noel to fill with treats. Belle explained in the moment Belle missed her father very much. Just then, Chip's expression changed. What's the matter, Belle asked. I'm a teacup, Chip said, hoping, hopping onto Belle's palm. I don't wear shoes. What if Papa Noel can't find me? Belle smiled. You might be a teacup now, but you weren't always. Do you have any of your old shoes lying around? Yep, Chip replied. All the enchanted objects do. Belle and Chip jumped into action. They raced from room to room, gathering up pairs of old shoes for Chip, Mrs. Potts, Lumiere, and Cosworth. Once the pairs were gathered, Belle and Chip made their way back to the library. They neatly arranged the shoes in front of the fireplace, then took a step back to admire their work. A little while later, Mrs. Potts announced it was bedtime for Chip. But I'm not tired, Chip said, swallowing a yawn. Mrs. Potts and Belle exchanged a smile, then tucked the sleepy teacup into the cupboard. Yeah. 
Soon after, Belle and Mrs. Potts returned to the library to reunite with Cosworth and Lumiere. I'd like to do something special for Chip, Belle said. Lumiere thought for a moment. Long before the master turned into the beast, he was a little boy. Living in the castle, he exclaimed. Many of his old toys are still there. Perhaps you could give one to Chip. Belle's face brightened. That's a wonderful idea, she cried. Mrs. Potts was touched. The, that part of the castle is off limits, Cosworth said nervously. He was afraid to break the rules. Lumiere, however, loved a bit of mischief. They made their way into the beast's childhood bedroom. It was gorgeous. A little bit messy. This chamber hasn't been open for years, Mrs. Potts said. It holds too many sad memories. But Belle was only partially listening. Her eyes were drawn to a set of toy carriages. This could be perfect, she whispered. Suddenly, the beast burst into the room. How dare you enter here, he shouted. Everyone sudden for fear, but Belle refused to be intimidated. I was trying to find a gift for Chip, she said, finding her courage. He, he helped me share the Papa Noel tradition with the castle, and I wanted to reward him for his kindness. It's Christmas Eve, after all. The beast had no patience for his. Get out, he shouted. Faced with no other choice, Belle and the enchanted objects took refuge in the kitchen. Is he always that unreasonable? Belle asked. Mrs. Potts tried to explain. Soon after, he lost his mother. He lost the very, his favorite toy she ever gave him. A white horse with blue eyes and a black mane. She revealed, out of sadness and anger, he closed up that room forever, along with his heart. Belle felt sorry for the beast, but she wouldn't be swayed. As the enchanted objects drifted off to sleep, Belle returned to the beast's childhood room. While searching for Chip's gift, she found a ball of string and a music box. Then she happened, she happened upon a pair of the beast's shoes from when he was a boy. Setting the beast's shoes aside, Belle turned to the toys in front of her. With a little tinkering, she knew she could create something wonderful for Chip. Being the daughter of an inventor, Belle had plenty of experience with things like this, and somehow working this way made her father feel close by. Belle lined up the carriages and tied them together, then she took apart the winding mechanism from the music box and put it into the first carriage. Belle worked long into the night, now all she needed was something to wrap the gifts with. She opened a drawer and deep at the back found a spool of red ribbon. Perfect, Belle whispered as she reached inside. But behind the spool, Belle discovered something even more precious. It was the beast lost horse. Ever so gently, Belle held the toy in her hands. You've been dearly missed, she said. It's about time you were found. Belle knew exactly what she had to do next. First, she fashioned a few bows out of the red ribbon. She placed them on Chip's carriages and wrapped a large one around the toy horse's neck. Then she made her way to the beast's current bedroom. She carefully placed the prince's shoes outside his door with the toy horse resting inside. She knocked, then slipped away. When the beast opened his door, he immediately recognized his long lost favorite toy. Where did you come from? He asked, hardly containing his delight. Belle smiled to herself. She had been hiding behind a nearby pillar and watched as the surprise melted the beast's anger into joy. She had a feeling it was going to be a very Merry Christmas indeed. Before heading off to bed, Belle stopped by the library. She placed the carriages by Chip's shoes and hurried back to her room. She couldn't wait for tomorrow. The next morning, Christmas arrived. Belle and the enchanted objects hurried into the library. The objects usually enjoyed a cozy fire in a freshly decorated room, but this year something magical had happened.
Well, bless my soul, Miss Potts exclaimed. She then directed everyone's attention towards the fireplace. Each pair of shoes was filled with treats and surprises. Papa Noel did come, Chip shouted. He found us! Belle couldn't believe it when she left the carriages for Chip last night. The shoes were empty, but now every pair was full of bursting. Then Belle scooped Chip up. Papa Noel brought us most of this, she said to the teacup. But the carriages are from me to you. Thank you for all your help yesterday. Wow, Chip replied. Thanks, Belle. Belle smiled then revealed the final surprise. These may look like ordinary carriages, but they're not. These carriages can move on their own, she exclaimed. She turned the crank and the carriages drove by themselves as if by magic. Then the beast poked his head into the library. Belle convinced the beast to join them and he walked over to the fireplace. I'm sorry I was so angry yesterday. The beast confessed. I didn't see you get angry, Chip said. That's right, the beast said, turning to the young teacup. You didn't, but I heard you played a big role in bringing Papa Noel back to the castle. Chip blushed and hopped onto the beast's shoulder. The beast presented Chip with a toy horse from his youth. This horse is very special to me and it needs someone very special to look after it. I was hoping that that could be you, the beast exclaimed. exclaimed. I'd be honored, Chip replied. A happy tear ran down Mrs. Potts' cheek and Belle's heart swelled. It was the happiest Christmas that anyone could remember. The end. And that's story time with Azul, Christmas gift for Chip. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Until tomorrow, bye. All right, well, I think I'm gonna end Vlogmas day five on that. It's pretty short and simple today. Nothing much going on. Um, but hey, I'm still pushing through. So please give this a big thumbs up. Make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel. Push that notification button that you know that you are up to date with everything that's going on with my YouTube channel. And follow me on all my social medias. TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. And remember, love is love. And we are counting down to Christmas. So have a good night. See you tomorrow for Vlogmas Day 5. And we'll continue to send our cards out, our letters out from Ansel. All right, enough of that. Good night. I love you. Bye.